Yo! Last week, we talked about the basics of Bitcoin and blockchain technology, as well as why I personally invest in crypto. Building a solid foundation by understanding the fundamentals of what it is you're actually investing in first is so important. If you haven't watched it, you can like watch it here. I'll link a card here before you start watching this video. Now, if you have your heart set on buying your first crypto, stick around because we're going to talk about the things that you should know before buying your first crypto as well as where and how to buy. Look at that. What's up friends? Welcome back to this week's video. If you're new here, my name's Nicole and I make videos every Wednesday. Featured comment for this week, Junior Ordell. I have been trading with Miss Melissa Levy. 1.5 Bitcoin to 6.7 Bitcoin. Wow! <laughs> I'm just joking. These are crypto bots, all right? They're always in the comment section with any crypto-related video. Get out of my channel! Something important to take note of when you're getting into crypto is that you are your own bank. What? What does that mean? We're all used to having central authorities to turn to or like blame whenever we make user mistakes. When you forget your password, when you forget login details, there's always these institutions that help bail us out. Well, there's little to like none of that in the crypto world. Majority of the world in crypto is decentralized. So we don't have any of those institutions to bail us out if ever we do make a mistake. Because the main idea is to give back the control of funds or like mga assets and stuff like that to the people. There are a lot of people who are always trying to steal your funds. If ever you're victimized by a crypto scam, then pff, wala na. Transactions on the blockchain network are immutable and permanent. Once a transaction has successfully gone through and has been validated and uploaded to the blockchain, there's no take backs. Once it's there, it's there. So it's important that you know how to take the necessary precautions to protect your funds, to secure your funds, and know how to properly manage and then move your funds around. In order to do that, in order to help prepare you for that wild, wild west kind of situation, we're gonna divide this video into three main parts. We're gonna talk about the important things that you need to know and prepare before buying your first crypto. Where and how to buy, what platforms there are, how to get your coins off the exchange and into your wallet. Because it's important to not keep your investments, your long-term investments on the exchange because exchanges are very vulnerable to hacks. I am not a professional financial advisor. Cryptocurrencies are a very, very volatile asset. So only invest what you can afford to lose. Sure, you wanna chase like, ooh, 5,000 peso gains in a day, but are you okay with losing 5,000 pesos in a day? Think about that. Research is very important. Don't throw money into something that you don't understand. Google and YouTube is your friend. I am comfortable in putting my money into crypto because I've taken the time and effort to understand what it is and how it works before I invested in it. All right, so let's talk about the good stuff. What are the things that you should know about and prepare before you buy your first cryptocurrency? Take cybersecurity very seriously. So the first and probably easiest way to do this is to create a new email address and only use that email address for all your crypto-related transactions. Keep it separate from the email that you give out to people. No one should know about this email except for you. Gmail is fine, but if you want to take the extra step in staying safe, you can create a new email account with Proton Mail. Proton Mail is an email service that prioritizes privacy and security above all else. So I use Proton Mail for like a lot of my crypto accounts. Next, passwords. Make sure that the passwords that you have are long and secure. Don't change letters into numbers. Change A into 4, I into 1. Don't do that. Use long, random combinations of letters, symbols, numbers. Make it at least 12 characters, but then if you can go 16 characters, that's good too. Easy and convenient to use the same password on multiple accounts, but that's also like the easiest way to get hacked. Swipe or be swiping all of your stuff if you do that. I can't remember my passwords. You can use password manager apps, so you can check out Bitwarden, Dashlane, one password. Third, let's talk about two-factor authentication apps, Authy and Google Authenticator. It's very common on crypto exchanges and platforms. So what these apps do is essentially generate time-based one-time passwords. So every 20 or 30 seconds, the number will change. 
unless the hacker also has your phone at the exact same time, they won't be able to access your account. There's an extra layer of protection there for you. And then let's talk about wallets. Coins never leave the blockchain network. They're just transferred from one address to another. There are no actual physical coins that you store in a wallet. When you create a new crypto wallet, you actually generate a private key and a public key. The public key is like your email address. Public keys are what you send to other people if ever you want them to send you funds. Like it is also what you enter on like the exchanges and the platforms if you're trying to transfer your coins from the platform onto your wallet. It's safe for you to show this to the world. On the other hand, a private key is like your password that gives you access to your funds on the blockchain network. You should never let anyone know your private keys because whoever has your private keys has access to your crypto funds. So there are three main types of crypto wallets. Software, hardware, paper wallets. Software wallets are what we consider as hot wallets, meaning that they are connected to the internet. These wallets tend to be the least safe among the three types of wallets. There are web wallets, so this usually comes as an extension in the browser. There are mobile wallets, so it's usually an app on your phone. And then desktop apps, the hardware wallet. This is a Ledger Nano X. You just essentially, these are dumb computers. This is what holds my crypto keys, it generates my crypto keys for me. It's used to sign the transactions with your private key. They don't actually have direct access to the internet. If ever you're gonna store large amounts into like cryptocurrencies, it's best to have a hardware wallet. It's a bit pricey, but it's worth it for security. Third, we have the paper wallets. People don't actually recommend that you store your funds in paper wallets anymore. This is how they look like. They're essentially just QR codes. This is my public key. <laughs> I don't use this. The downsides of having this is that if ever you lose your QR codes, if it's wet, QR code becomes unreadable, then you lose access to your funds. It's the safest, like no internet access for this baby. But yeah, something to take note of, not your keys, not your crypto. If you don't own the private keys to the wallet, someone else is managing the funds for you and is controlling the funds. It's not really yours. It's ideal to get a non-custodial wallet, meaning that the wallet provider actually has no control or like access to your funds. With non-custodial wallets, you'll be able to generate a seed phrase. They're usually 12 to 24 characters. This seed phrase is what you use if ever you're going to restore that wallet on a different wallet. For example, this is my crypto wallet and I happen to like lose this like device. I have a seed phrase associated with this wallet and I can use that seed phrase to restore my wallet on a new device. No, never ever share your seed phrase with other people because they have access to the funds in your account. Don't store your cryptocurrencies on the exchange. Exchanges are very vulnerable to hack. So if you're not going to trade on a regular basis, best to keep it in a wallet. There are a lot more options on multi-currency crypto wallets. In just one wallet, I am able to have a Bitcoin wallet, an Ethereum wallet. I can store a lot of different cryptocurrencies in just one device or application. It's easy like to search for crypto wallets, but then just to give you guys a place to start, you can check out Trust Wallet, Exodus. As long as you have your seed phrase, you can restore your wallet on different wallet applications. For example, you created a wallet with Trust Wallet, you can restore that on other wallets. Now that you got those things out of the way, let's talk about where to buy your first cryptocurrency. Let's start with Coins.ph. Coins.ph is an e-wallet like Paymaya or Gcash, it's a very convenient app for you to buy your cryptocurrencies. They support Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Ripple. I personally don't like buying crypto from the Coins.ph app because it's so expensive. If you check the price of Bitcoin in the Coins.ph app, Google the market price of Bitcoin, there's a really wide spread. Those are their rates. If you do choose to buy with the Coins.ph app, make sure to transfer your coins from the e-wallet into a designated non-custodial wallet so that you have ownership of the coins. They also have an exchange, they call it coins.pro. I've personally not used it before, so I don't know if, if whether I should recommend it. One of the pros is that you can easily transfer your funds from the exchange to your coins.ph app and then vice versa. Yeah. 
And then let's talk about PIDAX. It's another local cryptocurrency exchange. PIDAX currently supports Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Ripple. They're doing a lot of initiatives to educate more and more people about crypto and then also some projects to get more people onto the platform. Something that I don't like about PIDAX that much is that they have high fees. So withdrawal fees, for example, are quite high to be able to maximize the fees, deposit and trade higher amounts. The good thing with PIDAX is that you can actually start trading with a minimum of 52 pesos. I'm not just saying nice stuff about PIDAX because I partnered with them. I liked the platform even before they reached out to me. So use the code Nicole to get 30 pesos for a minimum cash in of 1000 pesos. When you use my code, you get 30 pesos and I get 20 pesos. Next on my list is Paxful. It's not an exchange. It's a peer to peer trading platform. On Paxful, you'll only be able to buy or sell bitcoins. Now this one is another favorite of mine, crypto.com. On their app, you can conveniently buy cryptocurrencies. It's easy to buy cryptocurrencies through their app. They also have an exchange, but I don't use the exchange that much. I just link my PayMaya card to the app and then purchase crypto. So with crypto.com, they're actually offering a lot of services. It's not just a place for you to buy your coins. They also have this earn feature. It works as though it's like a bank account. If you're actually planning to get into cryptocurrencies, check out these interest rates, yo. Damn. These are really high interest rates. I don't know about you, but that's wild. If you're interested in signing up for crypto.com, if you sign up with my link, you get $50 and I get $50. When you sign up, you automatically get it into your account, but you won't actually be able to unlock it. Unlock meaning you sell it or you withdraw it until you stake 50 more MCO. This is essentially what you get if you stake 50 MCO. <laughs> Such a flex card. This is their crypto.com debit card. It's metal. I'll probably make a separate video on them in the future. All right, so the video is going to be a bit too long if I try to cover how to buy crypto on all of these platforms. So for now, I'm only going to teach you guys how to buy Bitcoin from Paxwell. They have a lot of payment methods available on the platform. Bank transfer, PayPal, Western Union, cash deposit to bank. Yeah, this is essentially where I buy most of my Bitcoin because I think it offers the best price. You'll be able to see the current market price of Bitcoin right here. If you want to buy Bitcoin from Paxful, you click that button, buy Bitcoin. And these are the available vendors who are selling Bitcoin. Not all of them sell Bitcoin for the same price. The buying limit just tells you the minimum and maximum amount you can buy from a certain vendor. So let's say I'm going to buy from Bloom X. I've personally done trades with them before. Their buying limit is reasonable for my budget. <laughs> I cannot afford the other vendors. With Bloom X, you're required to submit a photo ID. Their payment method is bank transfer their markup rate is reasonable naman i'll click buy okay how much do i want to buy i'll be entering 1000 i'll receive this much in bitcoin if it's your first time trading with them they give a rule na please send in your photo id before they send you the payment details so i've traded with them before i didn't need to submit my id again rest assured that the trading process is secure when you initiate a trade the bitcoins that you're trying to buy is locked up in the escrow account. Okay, let me just pay for it. Okay, I've paid for the bitcoin. I've transferred the 1000 to their bank account. Now I'm going to upload the proof of transaction of my payment. Click this button to show that I've paid and I'll wait for them to verify the payment. All right, it took a bit longer. It usually it takes uh, about five minutes. There we go. I already have my bitcoin. All right, so third part, I'm going to show you how you can actually transfer your coins from the exchange or from the platform onto your crypto wallet. So when it comes to using Paxwell as a platform, these are the fees. Buyers don't actually get charged a fee, no fee on your part if you're buying Bitcoin. When you're going to withdraw your funds from Paxwell, take note of the fees associated with it. So I'm just going to show how you do it with Paxful, but the process is more or less the same with other platforms. All right, so I'm going to withdraw the Bitcoins that I bought a few days ago. So I have a couple of Bitcoins here in my account and I'm going to withdraw my entire balance. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to this wallet. I have about 3,200 pesos worth of Bitcoin here. So I'm going to open up my wallet. So let me just log in. In order for me to withdraw, the funds that I have in my Paxful wallet, I'm going to need to pull up my Bitcoin address. So this address is what Paxful currently supports. 
So let me just connect my hardware wallet. If you're using a mobile wallet, you won't need to do something like this. Alright, so this is the public address that I'm going to need to copy in order to receive the funds from my Paxel wallet. Let me just verify that it's the same as what's on my hardware wallet. Alright, so I just checked it. Alright, so I'm going to copy it. And then I'll go to Paxful. So I'm going to type how much I want to withdraw. In this case, my entire Bitcoin balance. And then I'm going to paste the address here. So let me just verify once again that it's the same. This is what I was referring to when I was talking about two-factor authentication on most crypto platforms. There we go. So you can see that I've sent my entire Bitcoin balance. So now I'm going to wait for my transaction to be verified. All right, so now you can see that the transaction is already reflected on my wallet. Very easy. The process is more or less the same with other platforms. Just make sure that when you are sending your coins, that you are sending it to the right type of wallet. Don't send your Bitcoin to an Ethereum address or don't send your Ethereum to a Bitcoin address. If you make a mistake, you can't take that back. Mm -mm. Things to take note of. Whenever you send your coins from one platform to another, take note that it's not instant. Depending on the coin and the transaction fee that you're choosing, usually there's about 30 minutes to an hour before your transaction gets validated by the computers in the network. If you guys have any more questions, you can comment them down below. If you want more crypto videos, let me know. I love crypto. You can follow me on Instagram. I post stuff there. You can also join the Discord server. So there's a Discord server for you guys, the bread fam. And we have productive discussions there. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.